Hello, folks. Look at this. This is this is part of my Christmas gift. I like this. I didn't even realize I could use this on my computer. Ah, oh, my ears are free. Just have this one little wire. That's a good thing. Here, I am the one, the only root beer drinking Werther caramel cream center chewing hobo. I'm the one, the only hobo Tom. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching my review on Impact. Again, I have a while to go <laughs> until my suspension is lifted. A bad hobo. Actually, I guess I did do things differently for Wrestle Kingdom last year. But that's okay. I live and I learn. It's not like anyone else can take these videos and say that their own. Evil people, you know who I'm talking to. Messing with MXR and his cute girlfriend. Cute Asian girlfriend. I wish I had a cute Asian girlfriend. I used to have one. A long, long time ago. Galaxy far, far away. Far in many states. But that's okay. I'm not here to talk about Asian girlfriends, though. I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. And let's start off, um, you have a Randy Orton promo, and AJ Styles eventually comes in. Because AJ Styles gives the phenomenal RKO. Wow, I have to remember that. The only issue I have is distance with this. Still, so that's not too bad. It's nice plastic, though, actually. So it doesn't clip, it just kind of hangs there. And I like using Christmas. Christmas gifts are good. That means these things from like the mid 90s can go back away until I need them for backup again. That's pretty cool. Ah, into the drawer of doom you go. The drawer of forgotten stuff. Actually, the drawer of. I'm going to throw this out. What the heck is this? Oh. You, I need my password, my 2019 planner. Into the garbage it goes, into the drawer of stuff to be used later, goes the headphones. Because now I have my new microphone. Oh, I like this though. See, the thing is, I can actually hear my natural voice. So I can sing, ole, 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 ole. Much more naturally. Wow, uh, it's just so different. It's lighter. Oh, wait a second. That was a phenomenal RKO. I just has to remember the distance. Especially when it gets caught around stuff. I will get used to it. It's a matter of a repetition here, folks. And I'm in my hobo shirt, so you know I'm talking about wrestling. Because um, he is the box for a superstar. And then Drew McIntyre comes out. Definitely not a box for a superstar. But this leads to a triple threat match. Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. And wow, it's pretty fun because the club comes down. They, they always want to try and help AJ. They're a bunch of swell guys. However, Carl Anderson eats an RKO for his efforts. And Luke Gallows eats the Claymore for his efforts. Hmm. It used to be the best tag team ever. Now they're, now they're just the best beat up people ever. And I have to put that stuff away. Because that's kind of important. Uh, but with this, uh, it's pretty, it's fun though. With this, it was a freaky tree of low spot. Drew McIntyre is freakishly strong. Amazing core strength by Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre eventually kicks everyone. And Drew does a kip up. And as he gets up, if you've never done a kip-up before, kind of have to brace yourself. Um, he kept up uh, for a guy his size. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. We're not worthy. Because that was amazing. And he almost, he almost did screw it up by tripping over a prone Randy Orton, and that would have been bad. But he kind of caught himself. He's like, I'm good. It's always fun to see wrestlers do that when they break character for that instant 
Ooh, this actually gets a really good sound. Without reverb! And then with that, I mean, Drew's just amazing, though. Um, what else? And then eventually, we have, of course, AJ Styles post, post Drew McIntyre. And Randy Orton just takes the steps right to Drew's face. Wow. And, uh, the back and forth between Randy Orton and AJ Styles. As a regular match, that would be amazing to throw Drew McIntyre. I mean, besides just like some really small things, it was a pretty. It was actually a really fun match. Triple threat matches are just hard, hard to say. Flaming Young because there's so much cluster stuff going on. Um, but Randy Orton, he actually hit the, the Styles Clash, the RKO Clash, on AJ Styles. Of course, AJ Styles had the phenomenal RKO. But then Drew comes in. He Claymore kicks. Randy Orton pins AJ Styles. Drew McIntyre wins. And I think next week I have to make my, pre my predictions. Hopefully they're a little bit better than my 50-50 booking of Impact. But I'll tell you what, this match, this was an amazing starting match. This is a surf and turf match. Then there's a triple threat recap. Um, the Architects of Pain, that's what I'm going to call them because that sounds pretty cool. Taking on The Big Show, Kevin Owens, and Samoa Joe. So there was a recap there. And then we had Ricochet versus Mojo Rally. And this is Flippy Ricochet. Yay! Flippy R Ricochet is the best Ricochet, with the exception when it comes to strong, brute like, very clubbing Mojo Rally. I think the most offense Mojo did get off a of suplex. Some shoulder tracks in the corners. Again, Ricochet is amazing at selling those. Mojo's pretty good at delivering them. But once Ricochet flies, that's it. Mojo can't keep up in the air. Uh, then there was, again, the very brutish shoulder tackles by Mojo. What is known for them? And then, of course, Ricochet hit the recoil. And he went all the way to the top rope, did the 630. Wow, we haven't seen the 630 splash in a while. This is a cheeseburger of a match. Oh, I do have to say this. <laughs> McIntyre, when he came up to the ring, he was like, my Claymore is bigger. Oh, Drew McIntyre. This show is supposed to be rated PG here, buddy. Uh, but then we have the Street Profits to the kind of their uh, chorus recap. And then we had Charlotte Flair. Wow, that's a bad color scheme on her. Versus Sarah Logan. I'm like, wasn't this last week's match? Um, Charlotte Flair cannot wear anything skin tone, skin, skin tone color. It looks like she's naked in the ring. And that's not necessarily a good thing, especially if you've seen her, her, her nude leaks. Yeah, I mean, Charlotte Flair, I'm sure, is a very pretty woman, but no, it just doesn't do it for me for some reason. There are some in the WWE that, wow, I want to see their new. I think Asuka has, has some out there somewhere. She used to do, she did like one or two like beef, beef film things or blue, blue films, I think. Like way back in the day in her like, Stardom, maybe like even like Yoshi, like way long ago. Hey, you got paid, but um, it was Charlotte Flair and Sarah Logan. And again, this is last week's match, I kind of half paid attention. Uh, Charlotte Flair this time takes it to Sarah Logan. Yeah, uh, they go outside, she tosses her out, they start to brawl a little bit. Again, that color scheme and I thought I saw something down there. But the little um, other toe. Yeah, the, 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 the toe of the camel. Um, with this, I don't know. It, it was an okay match. Nothing great happened. Carol Ford definitely in control. 
Sarah Logan is definitely the brawler. But once it turned into a wrestling match and once Charlotte Flair could do a wrestling move, that was kind of it. Hit the figure eight on Sarah Logan and Sarah Logan had a tap out. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing, though, um, because we are leading up to the Royal Rumble, which I will be doing a review show. Can't live stream it. I'm done live streaming for a while. And I think I just have to be careful what I do. Unless it's AAA. I will gladly take another copyright violation for, for Triple Mania, though. I don't care. That's going to be awesome, folks. Yeah! But with this, uh, let's see here. Ouch! Yeah, Charlotte Flair, because of the Royal Rumble coming up, wanted to prove that she could eliminate anyone. She threw Sarah Logan out the ring, and ouch! Uchi, she landed really funky. I wouldn't even say her back, but more of her like side ribs. Short ribs hurt because there's there's no padding there, folks. At least the back is kind of solid, it's muscular. Short ribs, that's just all bone, bone, and the third hardest part of the ring never, never feel feels good. Uh, it was an okay match. Uh, I don't know. It was a can of soup. Wow, I'll really... Before I start deleting him? I just realized this is only the fifth video of the new batch. And then we have the Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and Big Show kind of promo. Size 7 XL fist. That's freaking big. That's like the size of my head. Then Brock Lesnar came out, did a promo. Well, I guess Paul Heyman did his promo for Brock Lesnar. Our truth shows up. He's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I was going to enter the Royal Rumble. He took one look at Brock and said, you know what? I'm going to to to, to disenter the Royal Rumble. And Brock was just like laughing the whole time. He was enjoying himself. And then Brock just clotheslined poor our truth and gave him the F5. Brock was, Brock like said something to him. The mic is like, yeah. And he put his 24 belts, 24 7 belt on him. Like, Brock didn't care. However, this led to a title change because in Mojo Rally, ever the opportunistic Mojo Rally is now your new 24 7 champion because he took out um, R Truth while on the ramp. R Truth is still rocked from the F5. Mojo Rally is now your new 24 7 champion. I'll tell you what, it was something different. It's a ham sandwich. I think this is the only belt Mojo Rally's actually ever held because as a member of the Hype... I don't think they were tag team champions as the Hype Brothers. Again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they... I don't think the Hype Bros ever got gold. Or they did... It was very forgettable and it didn't last long. Correct me if I'm wrong. Then we see Lana getting out of the limit of the stretch SUV, Bobby Lashley, and wow, Lana actually looks really cute without makeup on. Yeah, that or she did it like amazingly perfectly, and I can't tell what it was. But then it was a Bobby and Lana, and Lana promo. Lana has to lose the Russian part. No. Russian part does not work anymore. Uh, so this led, of course, to the Bobby Lashley versus Rusev. Very svelte Rusev match. And this was just brute on brute strength. So many strikes. A kick and clotheslines. A rebound clothesline. Um, the spear by Bobby Lashley has to be probably the best looking spear in the WWE right now. Because in fact... The gore is pretty good. That's in a corner. The no need for the jackhammer spear is really good. Roman Reigns spear, eh. Charlotte spear, eh. Those had a really good... I'll tell you what. Bobby Lashley might have the best spear right now. Next to probably... Besides, the original, besides Goldberg. Moose. 
I'll say Bobby Lashley has a 2A spear. You could argue Bobby Lashley, Moose's spear. Yeah. Six, six and one, a half dozen the other. Kind of one of those arguments. So I'll say it's, it's, it's 2A right now. Goldberg still is the best, though. So with that, again, <laughs> then it was just a straight thumb to the eye. That's awesome. Like heels. Then Rusev hit some overhead belly to belly. Oh, Bobby Lashley's no small guy. Then he was going against the he was going to get Bobby he was going to get Bobby Lashley into the acolyte, but Lana was made a distraction. Liv came down and she had a beer to the face and got tossed into the barricade for all her efforts. And wow, that beer lit up her boobies too. And listen, I don't know what bronzer Lana uses, but. Wow, she puts a lot on, on her chest. This was awesome. I thought this was actually a pretty fun match. I mean, I'd say, you know what? That is a cheeseburger match. Then we have Bobby Lashley and Lana um, after the match promo. This is going to set up for a intergender match between Rusev and Liv Morgan next week. That shit. It's either going to be one of those things where, where it's bad or so bad you just laugh at it. It's either going to be boring bad or so bad it's just funny. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go. Knowing WWE, this, we, we, could, we could see Braun panties. I mean, that's that's the whole thing with him from forever. That's that funny shit. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That's what they want. Actually, it has been a while since we've seen a Braun panties match. Um, if they do that, like every couple of years or so, at least it kind of goes out of mind. And then, like, oh, I remember this from a couple of years ago. If they start doing it every week, ugh. especially this thing with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, we'll see how that goes. That's Friday Night SmackDown. That's that's a whole other issue in itself. Uh, and then we get to the Viking Raiders take on the Bollywood Boys <laughs> in an open challenge match. It's just fun to see the Bollywood Boys come out. They got picked up, like, literally, like, thrown it, like, long barred into each other. That was great. It was, like, five moves. I don't, I don't even know what it was in the Viking experience. But at least they're not having jobbers come in and get totally squashed. At least it's known people. The Bollywood boys with their antics. Their antics lasted longer than the match. Eh, it wasn't bad, though. It was a ham sandwich. And then we had Rus Rusev and Liv Morgan. So so wait, don't make me waste my breath. I don't care if it's a three on one, five on two. Oh, karma's a bitch. Uh, so they accept. So that again, that's kind of. I do like the fact that they're setting up for next week. So it gives they used to do this, but it gives you something to look forward to. Maybe. Never know. Uh, then we have the contract signing with. Becky Lynch and Asuka. And to start off, you sure I just like poked Becky with the umbrella. And Becky took the umbrella and threw it away. Someone in the audience got a free souvenir. Oh, I'll get to Yeah, I'll get to that next. Oh, that is. Ooh, that is next. Uh, so, so this went the way most contract signings go. Asuka's so great when she speaks Japanese. She could just say, easy peasy. And she, she's just like the most over person from her own show. Asuka, oh wait. You know who else did that? Zack Ryder. I just realized that. Whoa, wait, that's right. So there are ways for wrestlers to get over. Besides being the WWE, is have a YouTube show. Oh yeah, Xavier would have that, but he was always over though with, with uh, New Day. Zack Ryder did that. He was an internet sensation. Asuka's amazing. Kinda, 
Connachin's TV. It's just fun to watch. And some of the most like mundane things. I've never seen anyone cut up that much cabbage before in their life, though. I'll say that. Uh, the beef tongue's kind of weird, but I know Japanese and people love it, though. To me, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just, I don't know. If I didn't know what it was, it would probably be good. Uh, then she cooked all that noodles. Noodle and, like, like many modern rice makers. They're just fun to watch. And her playing video games. I never want to see her get behind the wheel of a car. I don't care. I've seen her do the truck driving simulator. Eh, eh, not in my truck. Mine's just a Ram 1500. Nope. Uh, I know she knows how to drive, though, because she does have to drive herself places. But, no. No. Uh, but Asuka has the secret weapon. She has the green mist. In fact, she missed it. And then because of that nearly cringeworthy uh, promo, I wonder if something's going to happen. Because I think Asuka's going to win still. The Kabuki Warriors are strong. I think Kyrie Sane is still kind of happy, I think, ish. As being the tag team champions. And, and Kyrie Sane looks amazing. She wears a belt around her neck. She has her parcel with the spinny things. She pokes people with the parcel. Kyrie Sane looks like a badass now. I like badass Kyrie Sane. Although I do have the one story about Kyrie Sane when I met her at an NXT event. Um, randomly, I printed up pictures of hopefully people I, would, I was kind of hoping to see, especially at the autograph table. I think they had like a like five women from like the Mae Young Classic. I never heard of them. But after her match, um, she actually did come around and greet people. And I told my ex-girlfriend's nephew to, to ask her to sign this. And she actually signed it. And, and she looked at it and she's like, wow, you remember me? Because I think I got to find a picture of Kyrie Sane from her days in stardom. And she was like, and she looked at him, and she's like, you've never seen me? And it's like, oh, no, I remember. I, I've seen a few of your matches in stardom. It's like, I remember you. I just, I, more to the point, I, I think I, I think I more said, um, yeah, I remember that. You just came from stardom, and I figured I'd find, find a picture. And it's like, and thank you for signing. It's like, oh, wow. You remember me from stardom? I got my picture with Kyrie saying that. That made me happy. Um, all I need is that picture of Anderson Ray and and I swear I'll drop my pants, run into the wrestling ring, and and give the cops the chase of their lives. So I'll tell you what, I'll take those, I'll take those pants off, jump in the wrestling ring, I'll go box, I'll go heart boxers and wrestling t-shirt all throughout Daytona Beach. They won't catch this hobo. <laughs> I'll probably be banned from NXT of it. I don't know. I don't even know if NXT is coming to Daytona Beach anymore. They're not on the house tour list until like February. Maybe they were that poorly received. I don't know. They're not. They're not going to Sanford. Sanford was always a weird setup. It wasn't necessarily the best. Daytona Beach has a better setup. The crowd is was really getting after them, mainly for having, like, the third stringers come out and cut promos. And, like, people would, like, leave during, during um, I know some person, uh, Austin Theory gave a promo, and, like, you could see, like, five people, like, leave. It's, it's kind of disrespectful. I mean, the matches were actually really good. It's just that, it's just, like, the, the third string people... I enjoyed it. I like seeing the developmental guys come along. As long as they have a good match, I'm cool with it. Uh, if you have a boring match, though, and if it's boring match by no name, no name, and another boring match by no, I can see the frustration a little bit. But if you're having good, exciting matches, the crowd does get hyped up to some degree. There's no really need to walk out, especially if you're the fan of the night. <laughs> That's still terrible. They still know what to do about that. 
Oh, yeah, because I went to NXT Daytona Beach in some of my videos. They announced the fan of the night, and the person, like, left already. I actually kind of think I know who it was, because there's a whole group of NXT regulars that show up with that fat bastard. And he's a fat bat. I want to say it's No Little King. Because he showed up with all his, his buddies talking about how they go to all the WWE and NXT events in Florida. And he had on a... He had on a, a Steve Hearn Larson shirt. I'm like, dude, cool shirt. Like, I watched them too. It's like, who are you? I'm like, you listen to me, you fat bastard. I'm complimenting your t-shirt. Go back to full sale in that freaking mini auditorium. Uh, I think that's I think that's the only reason full sale always looks crowded and so loud is because it's just so small. So I know the uh, very deceptive thing with AEW is that they seem to fill up arenas, but I know when I went to the Daily Center, and I think I mentioned this, is that the Daily Center only holds like three thousand. Maybe you could speak a little bit more in there because you're taking it behind, you're putting chairs on the stages and in the orchestra pit. If they're selling out 3,000 crowd, 3,000, that's actually pretty good. Uh, but when they get into like the minor league hockey arenas, you can tell some of those places are empty. Again, NXT comes to Daytona Beach, they sell a couple hundred. Oh, NXT Live. They didn't sell out like anything. I, I snuck down. And again, you can watch my video about that, but I snuck down to a lower seat. Scary didn't care. By then, I think it was after the first intermission, they're like, whatever. So I know, I think when I worked the races, if. Actually, the races always. So now we're pretty strict about that. It's just, it's just like going any if, if you go to a sold out football game, you're not really going to sneak into better seats. But if you go to like NXT wrestling in a big in a big arena, unless the people are real jackasses, or unless you're a jackass too about it, say so, hey, look at the seat. I just kind of sat there. Yeah, I mean I've done that before. And minor league. Baseball games in the middle of the summer. No one kind of goes to anyway. That's an old hobo secret. Uh, but then, enough about this. Enough about my ranting and raving. Uh, Selena Vega and Andrade give a promo. Uh, Ray, of course, has a counter promo. I'm actually kind of shocked that... I don't know how... I know Ray's worked with La Parca. And for my impact, I did a little tribute to La Parca. I don't know what to do. My condolences go out to his family. It's always sad to hear when, when someone passes passes away, especially when it's not really... I don't want to say it's like your time, because I want to say this La Parca... I want to say he was less than 60? I mean, if he passed away at 80 years old, it's sad, but it's expected. When when you pass away younger, it's like oh, he has so much to do. I know he had a, one horrific wrestling injury. I think, and, and they were like, oh, well, he might 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 not last a long period, but he didn't. Um, I'm actually surprised Ray. And I don't know if this comes from above, but if Ray if Ray had like a skeleton mask, that would have been a cool tribute to La Parca. But hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to bash Ray for that. Um. I think he, it would have been really nice if he did that. Again, I gave him a park in a 10 second tribute video. I just had a picture of him with, with some, some uh, BC Boys riff track. Ooh, I should check that. Too. I don't think I got a copyright song for that. I don't know. We'll see. But, leads us, but this leads us up to really the match of the night. And if it wasn't for the ending, this would have been a flaming on match. But we have out, we had, uh, First, we had an Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy promo. Then we had the match between Aleister Black and Buddy Murphy. And whoa, this was amazing, folks. This was a match to watch. Very strike-heavy. 
the kicks and clubbing blows, the double stomps from Aleister Black to Buddy Murphy. I don't care what they say, that hurts. Um, some wrestling fan did get a souvenir because as they were wrestling, as they were brawling on the outside, uh, Buddy Murphy was against the barricade. Aleister Black went to hit a knee. And he, his momentum actually took him over the barricade into like some fans left. So some fan not only left with a Japanese parcel, but they almost left with Alistair Black as well. And I don't think Zelina Vega would like that. Uh, from there again, uh, Buddy Murphy caught the black mask. And, and Buddy Murphy tried to cheat. He tried to grab the tights while pinning Alistair Black. Ref said, ah, you can't do that. Uh, Alistair Black did. That was a one really amazing false finish. Buddy Murphy hit uh, Murphy's Law on Alistair Black. Kind of positioned him a little bit away from the rope. Make sure the arm couldn't get there. But he did get his leg to, but Alistair Black didn't get his leg on the rope. This drove Buddy Murphy absolutely bonkers. Uh, then again, it was a quick knee and a weird, and a black mask from Alistair Black, but the referee didn't count three. He counted two. I think he saw, and I can see why he did, because Buddy Murphy kind of kicked his leg up as if it was going to be a kick-out attempt. So he said, no, no. His shoulders were up. So it was a second black. Black mass is kind of weird and wonky. If the ref wasn't paying attention, if the ref out of the corner of his eye saw the leg, because generally when you kick out, you kind of you kick out. Well, you kick out with your legs. That's why they call it a kick out. But the referee might have been expecting a kick out, and Buddy Murphy couldn't get his shoulders off the mat. It's one of those weird things. So Alistair Black just gave him another black mask anyway. <laughs> okay, it would poor Buddy Murphy. Like Buddy Murphy's on his knees, black mask. Murphy's knees. He just like flops, like. That flop. It was just a kind of a weird end. And for change, Gary the King Law was really good on his commentary. Um, again, he talked about the tough guys, because these were two tough guys, Buddy Murphy and Alistair Black. He talked about Nick Bockwinkle. Whoa. Bill Dundee. Whoa. Uh, wrestling the Macho Man, and they did have some steel cage matches in Memphis. So it was pretty cool to hear those old school names being tossed out. So I'll mention Nick Bockwinkle and Bill Dundee to people. They're like, huh? Who's that? I don't think... I don't know if they're even still... They still might be... I forget if Nick Bockwinkle passed away. Dundee might still be alive, maybe. Again, they're old. they were old. They were old in the 70s and 80s. So, but this match, I'll tell you what. Besides that finish, it was really good. But that... Ending was kind of screwy. It's still a surf and turf match. Then we have Eric Rowan versus a jobber, and Bud Murphy is just like so confused. It's like I, 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 he had that blank blank look and just sat there ringside and it's like I lost. What did I can't? He had that confused loss look versus the why the F am I here look by Britt Baker. So Britt Baker either has to learn how to act better or get someone interested in stuff because I think I showed everyone that picture again. It's like the, the most why the F am I here look like arms crossed. Just like looking around, like totally disinterested. Listen, if I ever got in the camera, I don't care. I'd be the happiest. Listen, I got on the big screen. I'm the happiest person around, folks. If I was a wrestler, I mean, because I'm, I'd be such a low level scrub, like five moves before I get squashed, wrestler. I'd be so happy to be on TV. I, I would say. Like even I, I can see myself doing like I headbutt him, I kicked him in the balls, and I still lost. How? How? 
So I can see, I can see Buddy Murphy doing that, but I wouldn't be like, why am I here? Again, that's, that's I guess, own thing. Um, so Eric Rowan came out again versus Jobber. Bunny Murphy is still there. And this guy, the Jobber, he's like, You want to see my pet? Well, I want you to pet my pet. And it's like, Oh, we're, we're going to see it. So he takes the sackcloth off, and it's literally like something in a box. He opens a little door, he puts his hand in, and then he like gets bit in the hand. He starts bleeding from the hand. Whoa, this pet bit him. It is a skunk. It's what I thought all along, folks. A skunk will bite you. A skunk will spray you. Not necessarily red, but a skunk will spray you, though. Uh, and then... So, so he, again, he goes on to squash a jobber. Picks him up. And we have a special movie now. We have the bloody... Bloody... Hand, face, claw slam. So that was pretty cool. And I'll tell you what, again, they're milking this for all it's worth. This was a ham sandwich. Then we had the main event, the inning, the fist fight between the Architects of Pain versus Kevin Owens, a Samoa Joe. And the big show. And for the most part, the big show starts off clean house. Uh, KO. He, um, the authors of Pain just speed up Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe take him outside the ring. Kevin Owens does some like ninja cannonball thing onto one of the authors of Pain who was on one table. And then Samoa Joe did a senton onto the other table. I am the table. I am the table. I am the table. This time, the WWE has real tables that break. So the tables sell. They do their job. Uh, eventually, the uh, authors of Pain get up. They just beat up Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe. They leave them up. up. They put, I want to say, Samoa Joe on, on the table and powerbomb. Well, I want to say powerbomb. Or body slam Kevin Owens onto Samoa Joe. Forget exactly who got who. I did not write that down. But Seth is all alone in the ring against the Big Show. Boy, Seth, Seth, he looks tiny. So he asks Buddy Murphy for help. He's just like, "What? You're asking me for help?" And you could actually see the gears going in Buddy Murphy's head. Buddy Murphy's really good. Buddy Murphy, I have to applaud you. You do deserve better than Alexa Bliss. That was so hard for me to say. But Buddy Murphy's came so far from Murphy and Blake and having Alexa as or Alexa Bliss as as their valet. And then when Alexa, I remember I think Buddy Murphy was still wrestling in NXT and he had a match versus someone and someone in the crowd wanted to heckle him. It was a great heckle too because they said Alexa Bliss is more famous than you are. Oh! That was a rib. And then he got called up to 205 and now he's on the main roster in main event spots. I mean, having turf and turf matches against Aleister Black. What more could you really ask for? Uh, so so Seth, Seth asked Buddy for help. And Buddy Murphy, just when the Big Show was going to annihilate Seth Rollins. Oh, he was going to take that size 7 XL fist. But Buddy Murphy hit him with a Big Show low blow. Oh, and then that set up for the curb stomp. The referees deemed that no one else from that team could continue. The Architects of Pain win this match. And and Buddy Murphy makes and and he hugs Seth Rollins. Indeed. And then it literally became like a four in one situation. Buddy gets the hug at the end. Congratulations, Buddy Murphy. I'll tell you what. It was kind of a weird match though. It was a fun match though at the end. That's a cheeseburger match.
And that was Monday Night Raw. I don't know. Monday Night Raws are weird. They just seem to be really good. They have... They're starting this formulaic thing where they have really good wrestling. God, awful promos, though. Like, the promos turn you off from the wrestling. The wrestling kind of keeps you in it, but the promos, like, well, maybe during the promo, I'll, I'll switch to something else. So, I wonder if that affects ratings or anything. I don't know. People out there in the YouTube galaxy know more about that than I do. I'm just a simple hobo, but very simple YouTube channel. And that was raw. I mean, I'll tell you what, it was a cheeseburger raw. So it's really hard to argue that the WWE is putting out a bad product. It's very consistent, very safe, middle of the road. It's not like the highs and lows of impacts because the impacts, impacts really good. It's really good. When impacts bad, oh my God, it's terrible. New Japan, uh, Naito taking on Okada. Amazing Play Mignon match. Um, gang warfare for these uh, trios never open weight championships. Not so much. And then just gang warfare and just like random tag matches, random eight, eight man matches between Bullet Club and Chaos, uh, LAJ and Suzuki Goon. It's just random. So, again, it's that normally, like, New Japan's up here, but then every so often they have that, like, stinker of a match, and mainly it's when, like, it's like the random eight-man tag stuff, so kind of still, still pretty much up here. So, like, WWE's here. New Japan tends to be up here. But WWE is very consistent, though, whereas New Japan kind of wobbles a little bit. Impact, it's, it's, it's a great or bad. AEW, the tag team's amazing. The men's belt is good. The women's sucks, though. So, it's a whole dichotomy of wrestling for everyone. So, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And so, tomorrow I have spotted because it's just an impact recap. I might do an NWA recap show. We'll see how I feel. See how long that takes. I do have actually a pile of work to do. Thursday, I'm off. Uh, Friday, Wednesday, I'm actually working, so there's no AEW. Friday, it's going to be SmackDown, and I might hold off the NWA until, until Friday as well. Saturday, I'm off.